Hi, welcome to part two. I'm Adam from Ven Audio. See? And in the last part, we imported an OMF, including channels for boom and radio mics, and we organized it all into dialogue track playlists. So our job for the first pass is to choose the radio or the boom or a mixture, do a bit of cleanup or putting alternate takes in, etc. So, for example, take a listen to this. The boom's quite faint there. Let's listen to the radio. All right, lad. The radio's clearer, but it's a bit unnatural. It's much closer than what we see, and the rest of the film's going to have quite a noisy background. Luckily, however, we've got some PFX here. Let's take a listen to that. Great, some footsteps. So, let's use that with the radio. All right, lad. What's going on? Nothing, Sounds man. good. You right? Let's jump ahead now. So, we've got a big gap in Armand's dialogue track. Let's listen to what's in the playlist here and see about filling it. Anyway, you've got my stuff. Not good enough, really. The other track? Anyway, you've got my stuff. Yeah, good. Let's use that. Anyway, you've got my stuff. And then fill this gap with Henry's shot. You got my phone? Ah, here he's speaking away from the boom. Let's choose phone? the radio mic for that. You got my phone? No, Much I'm better. getting it now. So, I go through the whole film like that, choosing all the best recordings I have from the OMF, as seen here in this time-lapse. Let me show you some basic alternate take replacement. First, take a listen to this line. I really want to do this for you. It's a little slurred. If you have a good relationship with your editor, get them to put some alternate takes in the OMF, or you'll have to find some yourself. Right, let's choose one. Ignore the video. I'm really going to let do this for you. I'm really going to let do this for you. I'm really going to let do this for you. I'm really going to let do this for you. The first one's kind of the clearest. Are we really gonna let do this for you? Are we really gonna let do this for you? That's the radio. Are we really gonna let do this for you? Are we really gonna let do this for you? I like the radio mic over the boom in this case. So take this track. Are we really gonna let do this for you? Put it roughly in sync, and let's see how it sounds. You up for it? Are we really gonna let do this for you? It's not exact. I'll make the video a bit bigger so you can see. Are we really gonna let do this for you? Once again. Are we really gonna let do this for you? It's a wide shot, so we'll probably get away with it, but we can do better than that. In order to sync it up, I'm gonna use Elastic Audio. In my template, I have Elastic Audio enabled on my work track using the monophonic algorithm. I found it gives you the least artifacts with speech. So select warp, pop in a couple of markers, and just as a starting point, let's just match up the waveforms. Let's have a listen. Are we really gonna let do this for you? Once more. Are we really gonna let do this for you? The stuff that really gives the game away in terms of sync are the consonants at the front of the mouth. Burr, per, fur, mer. So try and get those in sync and you'll be fine, really. In this case, our anchor's the word for, so just look out for that. Are we really gonna let do this for you? Eh, yeah, it's pretty good. I think we'll get away with that. So I'm just gonna lose that. And if we bring that down to our dialogue track, it'll render out the time stretching, including handles, and it won't have to do that processing every time. Also, you always want to keep your work track empty. What can happen with the monophonic algorithm is that when you render it out, you get these low frequency bumps, maybe around 100 hertz, which I've had to filter out in the past. So make sure you listen to it again once you've rendered it. Are we really going to let do this for you? Let's take a little look at noise reduction now. A good place to start can be notch filters. They can be really effective and, above all, non-destructive. Take a listen to this. What do you mean you're getting it now, bro? <laughs> Where's my phone? No, it's just I let Kirby use it to make a call. So it's at Kirby's house? The background noise changes quite a bit shot to shot, and we can hear in the first shot there's a kind of hum. Let's try notching that hum. 
Pro Tools EQ can do a notch, but I'm going to cheat a little bit and use a spectral display to find out what the frequency is. So I'm sending this clip to Isotope RX4. I don't know if they've updated it to support handles, but in the version I'm using I have to make some handles or I won't have anything to fade with later. So just listening to it, I'm pretty sure that hum is 543.7 hertz. Let's see if I'm right. So if you just put your mouse where you can see the hum and look in the bottom right, you can see that it's about 543.7. Now I could use the plugins on Isotope to notch that out, but let's just keep it in Pro Tools for this. If you don't have anything to display the frequencies, then you can of course use your ears. So, just open up the one band EQ, select notch, turn the Q up. I've actually got a preset for this. Then we type in the frequency that we got from Isotope. Now we have to listen oh. carefully. What do you mean you're getting it now, bro? <laughs> Where's my phone? No, it's not. What do you mean you're getting it now, bro? And adjust the Q <laughs> my phone? until no, the base frequency of the hum is what removed. What do you mean you're getting it now, bro? <laughs> Where's my phone? No, it's not. If you have a hum oh. remover, then you could try that at this point as well. What do you mean you're getting it well. now, bro? <laughs> Where's my phone? No, it's not. What do you mean you're getting it now, bro? <laughs> Great, so you can hear the difference that's making. So just render that out, and that's the notch done. Let's try some noise reduction next. In case you skipped ahead to this bit, we've got two clips now with two different kinds of background noise, and we're trying to even them out using some noise reduction. Depending on the situation, you either want to bring the noise down all over so it's not noticeable, to bring the noise of one clip down to match the other, or to reduce the noise all over and then replace it with a consistent room tone or atmos. Now, noise reduction always brings artifacts, and personally I think it's more important to preserve a natural sound to the voice than to make it totally clean. Listening to the way Isotope works, I think they agree with me. I think RX works using lots of bands of noise gates, and so in the places where the voice is detected, less reduction is applied, or something like that. One thing to listen out for are little jumps in low frequency noise when the actor's speaking. I don't want to name and shame, but this is what all the dialogue sounded like on a certain Netflix series I watched recently. Another thing to listen out for when you use too much noise reduction and the words start to sound like they're getting cut off a little, like when the gating kicks in too harshly. So I'm going to reduce the amount of noise reduction a little bit, hit learn, and let's have a listen. Oh. What do you mean you're getting it now, bro? <laughs> Where's my phone? No, it's not. What do you mean you're getting it now, bro? <laughs> Where's my phone? No, it's not. It's sounding a bit thin, a bit gatey. So I'm just going to ease off on the noise reduction a bit. What do you mean you're getting it now, bro? <laughs> Where's my phone? And that should be fine. Render it out. Let's take a listen to our handy work here. We're looking at the second cut you hear from Armin to Henry. Getting it now. What do you mean you're getting it now, bro? <laughs> Where's my phone? No, it's just... I let the one we've worked on sounds a lot cleaner than the following one. So when we come to smooth everything out, we'll be able to match the background noise with Atmos tracks and fading. The important thing is that the quality of the background noise matches a bit better now. Level is easier to handle. Last little thing for cleaning up. I don't know if you can hear this through YouTube, but right here there's a bit of a thump. It's just a bit of handling noise from the boom. There's a couple of options for getting rid of this. Option one is to just take a bit of tone from elsewhere in the clip and replace it. Let's try that. You kind of get away with it, but it's a bit dodgy and you might not find a clean bit. Let's look at the other way. The other way is, of course, much more expensive and time-consuming. Send the clip to Isotope for a look in the spectral display. You can really see that bump there. Play that through a sub, you're not going to like it. So select it, use the replace function. Lovely. And if you remember what I was saying earlier about handles, this is what happens if you don't have them. Hold on. Better be and that's that. We've used a combination of notching, noise reduction, alternate takes, lumps and bumps removal, and we've chosen the best recording for every section. We're ready to start smoothing everything out.